Well, hello again. Another video. As you can tell, I'm still laid up. Still got a cough. Uh, it's a bit easier as it has been. Uh, this one is basically... A, a, I've had one or two requests about this. Uh, and what it is, is that... Um, how to do programming. And also, how can I make the train do... The, what have it's done twice or three times as it was as it, it's going to be doing. So, right... First of all, you have to make a program. And to do the program, for those who haven't done this before, is first of all, you go to this little tape recorder and you click on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to run HN Rail, that one there. I've already done programs, and I saw it's, it's a bit easier to show you afterwards. But So what I'm going to do is do that one train there. So what we do is we go up here, we click on that, and what it says there is anything you do from now on, it'll record. So we just click that. This is the train. So we're going to put the lights on. We're going to put the cab on. And we do the sound on. So there's the train there. All ready to go. So what we do now is we actually click the horn. We'll start it on shunt. Here it comes round on shunt. We're now clicking to cruise. Here it comes round again. What we'll do now is slow it down. What we're going to do now is wait for it to get near the station again. You have to adjust these timings uh, once you've got this done, this piece done. So we're getting around here to the station, and we now press the stop button. We we'll turn the sound off. We turn the lights off, we turn the cab off. So what we've got now is we go to this piece here, up on the tape again, and you click it and it says, would you like to view the programme you just recorded? And say yes. And there's that little programme we've just done. Now what you do then is you give it a name in there and then click the green tick and it saves it. And that is as easy it is to run a, tr a program. Now this bit here, which is the stop one, if when you run this program and it's either too bit over where it was started from or not enough, you adjust this particular one here. So that is as easy it is to do a program. I'm not going to use this one because I've already done it, but I'll show you what I mean now. Right. So, that what we've just done is this. I've already just programmed one. So we've got the lights on, the cab on, the sound on, the horn, the forwards, the horn again as it, before we got to the crossing again, the little forward, it's a 10 mile an hour, which is the, sh the sh shunt speed. Then it does the stop, then it does the sound off, the lights off and the cab off. So that is what we've just done. Now if I actually just have to put this one back again to where it was, like this. So that's where it starts off. So all I've got to do now with that is to go to my programs here. See, some of them model line down here are already done, but this is just a, just to show you in a video. Go down to here, go to HN Rail 1. There it is. Click that. Now all we can do now is click that. This should now do that little bit we've just done.
That was on shunt, now we should go now to cruise. Remember the CVs on this are high, so that's why it is that, because it's pulling all these wagons. That'll come round now, and when it gets to about there, the horn will go again. That's it, now it'll come round and it'll stop at the station. And all is a matter of adjusting that stop time to what you might have. Here he comes. There we are. So what you do with that is you actually adjust that to get it to where it's got to go there. There you are, there's that, there's the lights going out now, should be. Sounds gone off, the lights should go off. We haven't because it's, uh, because I've been messing with it. That's it. <coughs> so that is how you do a program. Now another way you can do that is if to check where, if you've got a signal over here and you want it to go from green to red and everything else, one way you can do it is to go into here, onto this program again, what we just wrapped it, which is HN Rail 1. There it is, that's the program. Now where it says run over here, you click each one of those boxes. Like this. Like that. Once you've done all them, you'll see each part of its program when it's when it's operating. So if you come down here, well, the problem is when you do it on this normally, you've got a little tiny screen up here and you can hardly see what the time is. But if you come down here to this little one here, which is a blue arrow going that way. If you click it now, watch. There's the sound come on. But also look down here, this tells you what the timing is on the seconds. To 23, they are, it's 24. It only goes in one in seconds, so the parts of a second like I've got in here, you have to adjust them afterwards. So now it's it's on the forward bit. It's now it goes into second. There you are. There's it goes into cruise, as you can see there. As it goes around, so at fifty eight. So. 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. There you are. Between 58 and 59 is when that horn goes. And you can see them all doing their own little bit as they go around. So in, in 71, there you are. That's just dropped now down to the cruise speed. And at 86.75, it's actually 86.7 by rights, but. 86, it should do a stop, which it has done, it's there, and then it's got the sound off at 97, there's the 97 one, at 100 the light the cab goes off and the lights go off and it's done. And that's how you can actually check it, so somewhere in there, if that, that signal you know exactly where it should be by the, doing the timing. And that is as easy as it is doing that. So doing those two is quite easy. Right. Now I'll just go put that back 
recommend my test because that was the wrong time in any event. Right. So, <clears throat> if you want to do that, what is just done, twice, you, there is a thing called repeater. And now you get to the repeater, if I actually come uh, on here, on here, let's put it there, right. And what we're doing here, in here, we just put zero. I'll show you what it, where it is, right. What the repeater comes in is, is this one, the program command. Do that. Go to this one here, instruction. Look down there, and it should come up with... Where is it? I always lose this one. Right. It's always bad to find where this one is. There we are. Repeat so many times. Sorry about that. Uh, it's the same time. Look at this. And, uh, so in there, it says so many times. And in that little end there, if you take that bit out, there, and you put in, say, two in there, like that, what it'll do now, it'll do the program that you want, and it'll then repeat it. So if you now go to a plus, I'll just show you this one, and we say this one, we just put it in this three. We go to the program again up here, go to the cog again, and then here there is one called end repeat. They are end repeat, so just do that. And that is all you those are the two that you require to do one of these repeats. So what we've done now is That was the one that we did. So what we've done now with this one is we've, we've put the repeat at the start, like we just showed you. We do all the cab and everything else, everything else, and then end is end the repeat. So what this will do, it'll do the train once, stop, switch off, and start again. So what we do with that one now, if I now go to this one, so this is one way to do it. Which is the two one, right? So this is going to do it twice now. <coughs> now one thing when you're doing this type of work, making sure that your track is clean, more so with sound trains, because it, all you need is a bit of dirt on it, it bleeps, it throws the program out. So always make sure your track's clean when you're running programs. You wouldn't notice it if you got normal trains, but if you've got sound ones, of course, you lose the sound and then it just throws wobbles because it's going to try and fire up again. So this is it. Now it should now go to cruise. Should do the horn about there again. There we are. Now, what's going to do now? It's going to stop. It's just a matter of adjusting the timings on these things. Um, sometimes it can take hours. Well, some of my programs have taken days to sort them out because they're very big programs. The more so is with these sound trains because there we are, that's stopped. There's the light come on. Now the sound will go off. Am I right? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. There's the sound gone off. Am I right? The lights will go off, the cab should go off. There we are. Now what's going to do now is going to start up again. The cab might not come on again with this one, but there you are, the cab has come on as it happens. Sometimes these extra bit horns and things like that, some work and sometimes they don't. Um, what you have to do is, when you're pressing functions, you know, for a whistle or a horn or whatever it might be, don't press them like you're playing a piano. 
You've got to press them slowly, one at a time. Leave a little space between one and the other. Because remember, the, the program has got to talk to your computer and tell it what to do. So that's now going to go up to cruise. And it should now stop. I think it's that in. No, I think it's... Oh, it's doing the horn again, sorry. I'm losing track. When I do these doubles and trebles, well, now it'll come round and stop. What I've had to do is between the first run and this double one, I've had to take a second off it to make it to get to where it should be on the end of that station there. <coughs> so this is going to stop now, should do. Here we are. It's a bit, a bit like it, but I'm saying they just have to adjust them. Uh, I've only did. I've only been messing with these this morning, so that's done that one. So that is by doing it that way around. Turn it all off. Turn the lights off. And everything else off. Right. Another way you can do it is, as I've got here in this example. What I've done with this is I've turned the lights on. The cab on, the sound on, the horn, and then I put the repeat in there. Look, see it. That's going to repeat it twice. Then it'll do all that bit there, and then it'll repeat until it gets to there, which is that one there, and I still leave the lights on. So what I'll have to happen with this one, it'll start up, it'll do its two, it'll do its two laps, stop, these will still keep running and then it'll do another lap and then it'll do that and then turn them all off. I'll show you that example. As you can see outside, it's snowing again. I've been buried in a foot of snow uh, yesterday. Having this cold hasn't dealt much. I just couldn't, I've had to go out and shift it. <coughs> so this is now going to do its two laps and stop. I have had just my office PC downstairs has just done a bunk on me. Uh, just over nearly a week now, I've been trying to kick it in. It's been taking over a day to, to get the screen come up. So basically the hard drive's gone in. So uh, last Monday uh, I bought a new PC. So I've been downloading stuff in there. I said I said to him at the time, this is Curry's. I said, oh, by the way, um, I need the hard drive out of this PC because I've got that much stuff in it. Uh, it's 45 pound, right? But w you, the can which you put the hard drive in, we haven't got the three and, three and a half inch. So you'd have to order it. So I ordered it. It came yesterday. Managed to split the computer and get the pull the hard drive out. When I pulled it out, it's a two and a half inch. So you know it's done that bit now. And all it's going to do is going to start off again. There we go. <coughs> so I've had to now order. A two and a half inch can for the hard drive now. Um, but also, of course, I lost my Railmaster. So I got the disc. The, the, the thing is, I don't know if anybody knows this, but all new laptops and PCs don't come with a disc drive. You've got to use an external one. So I had to buy one of them. So once I got that uh, yesterday, I... Uh, Put the Railmaster disc in it, went through it because it's, it's all registered, registered, so you go from that screen to another screen. The only bit I couldn't do was remember what my old email address was, which is a nightmare. So what I did, I wrote to Railmaster, and in fact, they know me as I know them. And within an hour, uh, they sent me the, um, the deactivation and reactivation. So I put the code in, so now my office computer downstairs is actually 
working again. I've got Rail Master in. Um, don't I've. I don't use it all the all these programs I've got on that in these which I say if you look in here there is I've got something like 140 programs now so <coughs> that is the way to do programs but uh, if anybody wants me at any time I'm here I'm on 01782 302194 uh, my email address is there again. Uh, please subscribe. If anybody wants me in to do a Railmaster, just call me. I'm always here every day. Um, so please subscribe. And also there's a donation button if you go to my main uh, site. Uh, if you want to donate. And thank you for everybody who's donated already. So I'll see you again soon. Bye.